Hi, this is Greg again at ATS, and welcome back to our labs. Today we're going to talk about uh, how to attach heat pipes into an assembly. Um, there are a few different ways you can do this. Um, this, shows, this shows one type of assembly where we have a plate uh, where heat is being dissipated, and we're transporting it to this finned area where the heat is dissipated. Uh, other applications may include a larger plate such as this where the heat pipes are spreading the heat along the area and the heat pipes are actually embedded in the entire part rather than this piece where they are transporting it from one distinct location to the other. So here I have the three main examples of uh, the attachment methods. Um, the first one is just a mechanical press fit. Uh, these fins are stamped from sheet metal and the holes are stamped in there as well. And if you size them properly, when, when they get pressed onto the fins, uh, they stay there. So that's, you know, mechanical press fit. Um, the advantage of that uh, is that it's, it's quick. And if it's sized right, the, the heat transfer is very good. Uh, to get the optimal performance, we can also solder these, but in most cases, the uh, thermal conductivity at this press fit is not going to be the limiting factor in thermal performance. Uh, for the best performance, uh, in, and in production environments, we usually try to solder heat pipes into the assembly. So this is an example of a soldered heat pipe in the assembly. And uh, first of all, to do this, well, this is an aluminum plate, and the heat pipes are copper. So in order to solder, we need to nickel plate this, uh, this uh, plate here. And then, and then we have solder paste that goes into these grooves, and then the heat pipes are inserted into the grooves. Now the solder paste is a low temperature solder paste. They're typically based on uh, tin bismuth alloys with a melt temperature of about 138 degrees C. And that's, that's important for the heat pipes because you really can't bring the heat pipe to more than 250 degrees C or else the water inside the heat pipe uh, will boil and the heat pipe will burst and then it's game over. So during the assembly process we would put the solder paste into these grooves and we would insert the heat pipes and then we would clamp it with some sort of fixture to maintain the, the contact there and then this whole assembly would go through a reflow oven. Now it this is really important uh, for the soldering process and, and it's why it is practical in production and maybe not so much for prototypes because a, a reflow oven will precisely control the temperature of the air inside and it will also have some kind of circulating fan so that the part heats evenly and quickly. Uh, and the temperature control in the oven is very important also because you, you don't want to exceed that critical temperature for the heat pipe. So, so for those reasons, uh, uh, in production, it's not a problem for us to do. But if you're making your own assemblies, you may not have a reflow oven. <clears throat> and uh, you might try some other methods to heat up the assembly to, to reflow that solder paste. But it, it's pretty risky and, it, and it's just difficult because uh, a soldering iron or a torch or even a hot air gun it's really difficult to to heat the part evenly and also to control the temperature that the heat pipe is being exposed to. So in a prototype environment we might turn to something like epoxy. So there, there are a number of epoxies out there that are thermally conductive epoxies. The thermal conductivity of a thermally conductive epoxy may range from about one watt per meter K all the way up to around five or six. But in, in reality, when you epoxy a heat pipe into an assembly, the bond line is so thin that it really doesn't make too much of a temperature difference, even compared to solder. There might be a few degrees difference, which is usually acceptable in a prototype when you're going to test it and you, and you will understand that there will be a, a de temperature difference of a few degrees. And that's easily um, calculated from the, the specs on the epoxy. Uh, to begin the epoxying process, first you, you either mix your epoxy if that's necessary 
or, or you can just put on the, the mixing tube and, and squeeze out a small amount um, to, to waste. And then you apply a thin layer into the groove and then insert the, the heat pipe. These, he's, these heat pipes were, were pre-bent uh, and they fit very precisely into these grooves. So you put your heat pipes in there. And then we would we would have a flat plate that goes on top and it and we would clamp it down with weight. And the other great thing about this epoxy is that it has room temperature cure. So once we put these in there and, and we clamp the assembly together, we can just leave it at room temperature for a certain amount of time and then we're all done. And then we also have the option of uh, putting this into into an oven at a high temperature, not a soldering temperature, uh, but an elevated temperature which will accelerate the cure. One thing to note is that uh, a good practice for embedding heat pipes into a, into a surface is to machine the grooves slightly deeper than the heat pipes are. And then if you can create a, a fixture that actually has, it's like a negative of this plate, so it has raised areas where the heat pipes are, then that fixture will press the heat pipes down into those grooves. So then after they're epoxied or soldered into the assembly, then you can fly cut the surface uh, and bring it right down and then the heat pipes and the base will be exactly the same height for optimum thermal contact. So that's what we would do in a production environment and if, if possible, we, we would do that for prototypes as well, but that's an additional step. So you'll also notice that in this kind of an application, we use flat heat pipes uh, and that, that's because, you know, they, they can maximize the surface, the contact area where you're going to have components. Um, and then in applications where the components do not come in direct contact with the pipe, then it's often easier and, uh, to use round heat pipes. And the round heat pipes also, they, they generally have slightly, they're easier to bend and they have a slightly better thermal performance um, than the flat heat pipes. So, so whenever possible, we use the round heat pipes. Uh, but for applications where they are embedded into a surface and they have contact with you know, the components, then we try to use flat heat pipes. So that covers uh, the assembly of heat pipes in, into heat sinks. And if you have any questions, uh, you can visit our website and contact us at www.qats.com.